mind, if you want to just turn around and face the, the camera and, and put on your best smiley face today. <laughs> We are so glad that you're with us today, whether you are uh, watching via Facebook or YouTube or uh, maybe at a later time, we, we welcome you into our service today. We've had a great time already. We've had a baptism and a great time of, of worship. Our service times are 9 a.m. for Sunday school, and then we have worship, corporate worship, and then uh, kids' church and what we call tween church at 10 o'clock for, for the younger ones. And so you're welcome at, at any time. We thank you for being with us today. You all may be seated here. And what a great day already. Amen? Amen. Great day that we have, have had. And when, when somebody gives their heart to Jesus Christ and turn their lives around and then they they show that by being baptized. It's not the waters of baptism that, that save, it's the Spirit of God that saves, and it's a great picture, it's a beautiful picture of being buried with Christ and then raising again as, as he did. And we, you know, we as, as Christians, I talk about this on a regular basis. We don't celebrate Easter one day a year. We don't celebrate Christmas one day a year. We celebrate the birth and the death, the burial and resurrection of Jesus every day. That's who we are in Christ. And we hope that, that you do the same thing. And we're so glad that you are here uh, today. And welcome to the friends and family members of Trey to be here and, and witness his, his baptism today. It's a wonderful thing. We continue our sermon series on the Sermon on the Mount. And if you're keeping score at home, today is part 12 of this sermon series. And last week, Jesus talked about our giving, that we don't give in a way that people would notice because that's the way the, the hypocrites did. The, some, many of the church leaders, the religious leaders back in that day, they gave so that people would see them give. And that's out of alignment with the will of God. And Jesus teaches that when you give, you do so secretly. And he even gave, gave us a, a great illustration that you have heard. He says, when you give, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. What a great picture uh, that is of, of secrecy, to give in secret. Well, this week we're going to talk about prayer, and it's going to lead up to the, the model prayer, if, if you will, the Lord's Prayer. And I've entitled today's message, A Secret prayer life. And we're going to look at Matthew chapter 6. If you have your Bibles, you want to turn, you can. We'll also have it on the screen for you. Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 and 6. And this is what Jesus says. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and in the streets that they may be praised by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. And Heavenly Father, we do thank you again for this beautiful day today. The day to come together to celebrate Jesus. And I pray, Lord, that the words that come out of my mouth today would honor you would glorify you, and they would be even the words that you give me to speak in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, there are a lot of people who don't like to pray in public, and I would say that the majority of people in any given room or, or time would, would say, don't ask me to pray, right? I see a lot of smiles on, on faces and, and nodding, Personality has something to do with that. Uh, a lack of confidence has something to do with that. And I could call on you know, any number of people here this morning to offer uh, a prayer uh, publicly. And I would get a response such as, well, I know you're not talking to me. Or maybe I'd get a comment like, 
I'd, I'd rather eat razor blades than pray in public. And that's probably true. You know, they say that uh, uh, public speaking is the number one fear, even over the fear of death, you know? So people just don't like to pray or speak in public. And you may know also, on the other hand, uh, people maybe growing up in, in church, you uh, might have experienced some people that are maybe even a little too eager to pray in public. You know, the ones when called on to pray, you know, they, might, they might preach a sermon during their prayer. You know, you know the types. And they just seem to babble on with nothing in particular to say. And I would say also that each one of us is guilty of taking prayer for granted. Would you agree? We're guilty of praying prayers that, that lack passion. We're guilty of praying prayers that lack specific direction. And I believe most importantly that we're guilty of praying prayers that lack faith. Book of Hebrews, one of my favorite, I say that too much about scripture, about it being my, my favorite. But he, Hebrews uh, eleven six, I believe, says without faith, it is impossible to please God. So we as followers of Jesus, we need to be exhibiting faith in everything that we do, right? Now that includes our, our prayer life. Even, and I think the writer of Hebrews, in that moment, he was speaking about salvation. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God in salvation, right? Salvation comes by the grace of God through faith. But Jesus gave us great direction on what our prayer life should look like. And you notice in these verses that Jesus gives us clear instructions on prayer, just as he did when we were talking about giving to the needy. That hypocrites, they give to the needy and they pray. How? How do they do so? Well, by drawing attention to themselves. Why? Why does he do it? Well, for the approval of men. So Jesus says to his disciples that if your motive in giving to the needy and if your motive in praying loudly in the church or on the street corners is to simply draw attention to your own spirituality, hoping that others will see you do it, then that's your reward. If you want people to see you, if you want people to take notice, if you want people to say, wow, he's really good at praying, well, that's your reward. So Jesus teaches the secret prayer. He teaches it just as the same as secret giving. And once again, this is kingdom living. This is what it looks like to be a, a child of God living in the, under the rule of God. We call that his kingdom. This is what it looks like. This is Jesus continuing to bring uh, light to wrong motives and hypocritical religious activity. And he replaces it with the authentic lifestyle that comes from a, a, a true personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And one thing that I, I want you to, to notice here is that Jesus does not condemn public praying. He's not saying that you should always just pray by yourself. He's not condemning praying in public. He condemns the public prayer that's offered by someone who's drawing attention, attention to himself or herself for the sake of public approval. National Day of Prayer is coming up in a few weeks. It's always, I believe, the first Thursday uh, in May every year. I've been fortunate to be a part of the group that kind of that organizes it, and it's great to see people from different churches, different ethnic backgrounds come together and organize this National Day of Prayer, and it's a great opportunity for us as God's people to rally together, to come together at one time. In the public, we do it at the, the courthouse out, out of doors, weather permitting, 
and it really is a wonderful time when members of other churches from all around the community, they come together and individuals take turns praying and it's just a, a great uh, experience as these people, they pray for our, our families, they pray for our churches, they pray for our businesses, they pray for local and national government. And that diversity is a beautiful thing to behold. It's wonderful. And usually a, a children's chorus from the primary center sings and, and it really is just a wonderful time of, of, of unity and worship and nobody gets, gets up and prays a prayer or sings a song for, for personal attention. The name of Jesus is lifted up. And I know that God is pleased by that type of public display of prayer and unity. He blesses the public outcries of prayer. Those that call for, for holiness and, and repentance. So Jesus tells us, he tells his disciples, the real reward comes when you're away from the crowds, when you're truly alone in your closet. And if uh, you remember the movie War Room that came out just a few years ago, and part of that movie was this, this lady actually built herself a prayer closet in, in her home. It was the place that she went, and inside it was, was sticky notes everywhere in this, in this room in reminding her of what to pray for. And it was, if that's what it takes, if that's what it takes, then that's what needs to be done. Most of us don't have a literal closet that we go in to, to pray. In James 5.16, in the King James Version, I think I have this for you, says the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Well, the Amplified Bible says it this way. It says the, the earnest, heartfelt, continuous prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. I always love the Amplified Bible. And I love the word in there that, that is used, continuous. Continuous prayer of a righteous man. Now, there's still the possibility when you're alone, when you're by yourself in the presence of God, there's still that opportunity to be hypocritical in, in your prayer. There's still the possibility to attempt to control God, right? And we've all had those, those prayers that we try to control the will of God. There's always that opportunity to make excuses for our behavior while we are alone in prayer. So it's, it takes work, it takes discipline to, to have a prayer life that is, that is not selfish in nature. You know, I mean, we can say we want the will of God, we can say, Lord, your will be done, but really? There's so many times that that's not the motive of our heart. So what's the point that Jesus is making about going into your closet? If you're like me at all, probably you are in some ways, uh, there's distractions. <laughs> away from distractions, away from other human voices, Sometimes just sitting in your prayer closet means sitting in silence. Just sitting in silence. And for some people, that's awkward. Especially if there's more people around, you know. And, you know, on the Wednesday nights when we, when we have fresh fire prayer here, sometimes we just sit in silence. I'll talk about that a little bit more. But sometimes it's in the silence, meditating on, on God, that we allow the, the whisper, the whisper of his still small voice to speak to us. So what he means to, to avoid the temptation of praying for the approval of men, remove yourself. Remove yourself from the temptation and just get by yourself. 
where the temptation and the distraction is, is, is minimized. And I doubt that there are people in this room today, I doubt that there's little, if, if, if any, uh, public praying that goes on for the sole purpose of, of personal attention or recognition of other people. I, I, I doubt that highly if there's anybody in here that would pray uh, just for recognition. So what's the biggest battle that, that you and I face in prayer? I could go right down the line and there would be multiple, multiple excuses or multiple things that just get in the way of our prayer life. I mentioned distraction. That's, that's a, a, a big one for me. A lack of passion when we pray. So often it's, it's easy just to, to pray a, a prayer that we're used to praying. You know, uh, we sat down at the dinner table with our family for years and years and years and years, and I could, I could move my lips with, with my dad as he prayed. Because you know, I knew what he was going to pray, you know. Lack passion. And I would say that, that many of us are, are the same way in our prayers. We, we pray the prayers that are familiar to us. Nothing wrong with it. But I believe that Jesus was a passionate person. When Jesus, when he prayed in the garden, I mean, it's not, I don't know of anybody else in history that, that prayed to the point of sweating drops of blood. I'm sure that none of us here has ever done that. I believe that Jesus was, was moved. Jesus, the Son of God, who had perfect fellowship with God the Father, still was driven to pray. And here we are, full of excuses, easily distracted, can't wait to get on our way. We can learn a lot. We lack direction when we pray. And I will just put in another plug for Wednesday night fresh fire prayer. I know we're very busy. We're very busy people. I, I understand that. But when you can set aside time to gather with others for a time of, and I call it aligning prayer, right? Being aligned. It's just a, a wonderful time to, to sit and we pray. We, we ask, first of all, we, we worship the Lord. We thank him before, for who he is. But we bring requests to him, and sometimes we just sit in silence. We let the music that's playing just, just minister. And it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful, beautiful picture of being aligned with the will of God through prayer. Who, as a follower of Jesus Christ, doesn't want to be aligned with the will of God? Come on, right? If I'm following Christ, I don't want to be going this way and that way and not knowing which way is up. I want to know the direction that the Lord is taking me. And his word outlines that for us so clearly. It aligns me. And Jesus gives us the solution. Some people call it the model prayer. We know it as the Lord's prayer. And if you want to go to Matthew chapter 6, it's just the next verses that we were going to read. I think I have it for, for you here as well. This is what Jesus says. He says, and when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. And he says, pray then like this and I love verse 8 and I think there's a whole sermon right there in verse 8 about what your father needs before you before you ask of him we're not we're not going to dwell there today but Jesus introduces to us the Lord's prayer it's the model of prayer it's the the prayer that aligns us and you can pray the Lord's prayer as, as many times as you've quoted it. Again, this is one of those prayers that you can quote and quote and quote and quote, and you can do it in a monotone and not paying attention to what you say. 
but it's the model prayer of alignment that Jesus himself gave us, and he said, this is how you are to pray. So we better listen. And by praying this prayer, it does at least two things. Number one, it leads you to pray for other things that God may lay on your heart. That's what happens when you get into the presence of God and you find yourself in a position where you can just listen. The distractions have become um, minimal. There's no, not that there's nobody around, but who else is in your, in your presence with you, gathered with you, they too are listening for the voice and the direction of the Lord. And so when you get into that, that place God may lay other things on your heart that you may hear from him as well. And number two, it aligns you with the heart of God. Um, I, know, I'll, I know nothing about cars. I was going to say very little, but let me just say I know, I know nothing about cars. And uh, we had a car a, f- a few years ago. We had it for a long time. And after a certain point, especially when I put on the brakes, it's shimmy. You know that, you know that when it's, well, I don't know what that's called, but I call it, it shimmied. It was out of alignment. And so I needed to take it to an, an expert that could diagnose it and align it so that it would run and get more mileage out of it. And our lives are the same. We need to be aligned on a regular basis. Every day. So how does the Lord's prayer or the model prayer, how does that prayer lead us to pray for other things that God may lay on our heart? Well, Jesus gives us this prayer as a, as a template. It's a template. We all know what a template is. It's a, it's a guide, something to, to go by, whether you are, uh, whether you're, making clothes you use a pattern whether you're um you're making stuff for machinery i don't know all this you know all these these things but there's a, a template that you use to make sure that the, the dimensions are right and that it's made in the, the the correct manner he developed and he he leads us into effective prayer It acknowledges God as our Holy Father in heaven. This is what the Lord's Prayer does. It expresses a desire for his kingdom to be established and that his will would be done on earth as it already is in heaven. I think that is is such a powerful statement that we would recognize and that we would desire that God's will would be done in our lives, in our family, in this church, at our job, whatever it is that we may be doing, that his will be done in my life on earth as it already is done in heaven. Alignment. Being aligned. It's a prayer that he would supply our our daily needs. It's a prayer of, of forgiveness for the sins that we commit and an expression of forgiveness towards others for the wrongs that they have done to us. And it's also a prayer asking that we be led away from temptation and evil. That is, that's the crux of kingdom living right there. That is the prayer of alignment. And whether we pray this, the Lord's Prayer or the model prayer or the prayer of alignment, whether we pray it, pray it once a day, whether we pray it 10 times a day, it aligns our spirit and our mind with the will of God. And it causes us to be more receptive to the other leadings that he may have for us. How many times have you prayed, Lord, I just want to know your will? I just want to know what your will is. And we're we're expecting and we're hoping it to be written on the wall or or 
you know, written in the clouds or something, when he gives us his direction in the word of God. And that's where we fail so often. Just be in the word of God and be in his presence. And if you're like me, many times you wake up in the morning and you're not sure how to start your day with prayer. You're not sure how to pray for the day that is ahead of you. Well, you can pray this, this model prayer. You can pray the Lord's prayer. If you find yourself, if you find yourself just not knowing what to pray, just go to Matthew chapter six. And just pray the Lord's prayer. Repeat it 10 times if you need to. And when I pray it, I personalize it. Taking the time to, to pray through it, adding expressions of, of praise, mentioning specific sins that I, have, that I have committed. I don't just say, Lord, forgive me of my trespasses, you know, but I name them. And by the time that you're, you're done, you've tapped into the heart and the will of God. It's a beautiful thing. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17 tells us to pray without ceasing. What does that mean? To pray without ceasing. It means to pray without ceasing. It means that no matter where you are, no matter what you're, you're doing, you can be in an attitude of prayer. Mowing the lawn, work, shopping, whatever you may find yourself doing, that you can be in prayer. That doesn't mean kneeling where you are and clasping your hands and looking up to heaven. It's not what that means. That means as you go your way, in the things that you do, no matter what it is, to be in an attitude of prayer. We have access to the throne of God at all times, 24-7, never closed. In fact, he, he awaits, he awaits, and he longs and desires that we would just come into his presence and just linger there. David says, I want to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. To dwell means to just to linger there, to, to come into that place and to not get in a hurry, just to dwell. Another translation is, is to reside, reside there, to dwell in the house of the Lord. And the blessing and the reward comes when he alone is your audience, not men. A secret prayer life brings blessing and reward from our loving almighty God. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. I can never express thanksgiving enough for your goodness, for your, for your all-knowing You are sovereign. That means you're in, you're in control of all things. There's nothing that escapes your view. You have a purpose in all things. And Lord, I thank you. I thank you for your loving kindness. It's because of your great love for us that you sent your son, Jesus, to die for us. And he did so willingly, laying down his life. And Lord, I pray that this morning there would be blinded eyes that would be opened to see. There would be deafened ears, Lord, that would be opened to hear. Uh, Lord, each one of us would, would never take prayer for granted again. Thank you, Lord. Be glorified as we continue this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand, please? We're gonna have a time of...